Hey guys, Jay here. This is SmartHelping.com. I've got a new financial model. It's a joint venture waterfall. Could be used for all kinds of different use cases, real estate, private equity, what have you. Any fund <clears throat> that's raising money and then paying a preferred return. The caveat here is, and I've never done this before, um, we've got two potential GP catch-ups um, that you can toggle on and off. And the reason why I have two is I've had one client, well, I've had a couple clients do this first one, but then I've had also clients want the, the second one to take effect as well. Usually not both at the same time, but you can do them both at the same time if you want, and it works uh, completely fine. So uh, I'll try to explain it high level and then go into the actual calculation so you can see how it works. Um, so what it says, this model, um, you've got an investment amount, you can have a GP and LP contributing some amount of that initial investment. And then that initial investment um, for the LP will have a preferred return here. So in this case, it's 8%. Okay, so simple enough, you're earning 8% per period. In this case, per year, obviously, this is an annual return rate. And if it's not um, available, there's no distributions. The model, because the model runs on just a set of contributions in row 12, and distributions in row 13, and that will drive all of these numbers. So if there's no distributions available, this just accrues. Now up here, you can define uh, if it accrues or not, um, which is to start clean each year. So if, it's, if you're not starting clean each year, which is no, then the preferred return will accrue. If you hit yes here, the preferred return just disappears meaning that if there's no cash flow available, there's no preferred return paid, and that's never paid at a future date. So usually that's always no. Um, now compounding is, depends. Uh, so if it's no here, we're not compounding the unpaid returns to cap essentially capitalize the interest if we hit no. If we hit yes, now we are compounding the unpaid interest and increasing. So you can see now if the preferred return's not paid, it's going up. So that's the first first um, essentially hurdle is this 8% uh, return. Now what happens after that is the GP has an option to get caught up based on the tier one distribution share. And so if you have this toggled on yes, then this catch up for the GP right here will get them to 5% of the total distributions up to that point. Now, the only thing that's happened up to this point is the preferred return. And we've accrued it, accrued it, accrued it. We finally paid out the unpaid returns when we had this uh, liquidity event. And we have the preferred return for the period. So up to this point, we've now paid the LP 1.8 million. Now, how much should, so, so now we paid that, now we gotta catch the GP up. So the GP needs to be caught up if this is on yes, which it is, to 5% of the distributions before anything else happens. So we say, well, if this is 95%, the total is 1.894, multiply this by five, we should have distributed 94,000 to the GP before we do anything else. So you can see here, what's the calculation? 94,737. And now in this case, if you want to add it up, we've distributed 1.8 to the um, LP, 94 to the GP. If you sum those up and you divide each one, you can see that's 5% and that's 95. Now, if you change this rate, let's say to 80, 20, you can see now the catch up is 450 for the GP. All it's doing is, so the first, first catch up is just saying, okay, Catch the, um, make the total distribution 80-20, and all that's been distributed so far is the pref. So that's the first catch up. All right, so after that happened, if you have enough cash flow to cover that, now the next step is now tier one. So now you've caught up to this rate, and now you're going to distribute remaining cash flows at this rate until the equity is fully repaid for the LP. Now, sometimes you'll see this at 100, zero, and this will be at 100, zero, and all that means is uh, LPs contributing all the money. They're getting 100% of the, they're getting their pref back and 100% of the cash flows until they get all of their money back. 
at that point then tier two kicks in and you have a 50 50 um split here although you could so you could you could split it 50 50 after that but if this catch up tier two is on which is a second hurdle now it's actually going to catch the gp up to 50 50 um, based on all the cash flows so it's going to give the gp all the cash flows until we reach a 50 50 split and then from there, split the rest 50-50. So in this case, whatever's in tier, if you have these both turned on, or I even if just the last one turned on, whatever split you have in here, it's going to be how the total cash flows are split, assuming you have enough to reach past you know, tier one, uh, repaying the, all of the equity. A and then you'll start, and then the GP will get all of the money until they've gotten caught up. If there's not enough to catch them up, well, they just get all the rest of the, the cash flows at that point. Um, now, in this case, there is plenty to catch up because there was not a whole lot of uh, um, the returns are high here. And you can see if we look at the total distributions to the LP, it's 50 million. Total distributions to the GP, 50 million. So it's 50-50. Now, at some point, let's say there was only uh, 10 million here. Okay, there was still enough to go half. Let's say there was only, let's say you had 5 million here. And then maybe a million here. Or 100,000. Uh, now there's not even enough to get past the, the pref. Let's go to 4 million. Okay. So now you can see the um, LP's got 7.8. The GP's got 1.2. Why is the GP only at 1.2? Well, we... We just started the catch up here, so there's there's um, well in this case we didn't even get past the the pref hurdle, so we haven't even started to catch up. The only distributions are um, on on year ten. We finally get enough to get uh, repay the equity, and there's no catch up happening here because there's no starting balance. Um, because this is 100% 0%. So this first catch up is catching it up to whatever this is, which is zero. So there's no catch up here happening. Now, there is some catch up happening here. We owe 7.8 at the start of period 10 or the end of period 10. We only have 1.2 available, so that's where that 1.2 is coming in. And now, as these go, let's say he had 5 million. Okay, now we're at 2.2, so we're still catching up. You see the the LP is not getting any more. The GP is getting this. Let's go to um, six, seven million. You see this is still at 2.8, and now the GP is at 4.2 because we're trying to catch the GP up to 50% of the total distributions of uh, for the entire deal. And that's not gonna happen until 7.8 million, uh, till the, in this case, it's 7.8 uh, million because that's what's been given to the LP. Now, if we get past that, let's say 12 million. Okay, now we're past, so we've gotten caught up and there's uh, 1.4 million after. We're now splitting that 50-50, and so now the LP is finally getting a little bit more again because the GP has been caught up. So that's how the second tier works. Um, and like I said, the first tier is just catching the GP up to whatever split is defined in tier one after the pref has been distributed. And then this, the, and then you go to 9010 until equities were paid. Once equities were paid, you then potentially have another catch up to this rate. And then once the GP is caught up to that rate, then you go 50-50 for the rest. Now you can have options here. You don't have to reduce equity balance. Now if you never reduce equity balance, you never technically hit tier two. You're always in tier one. So in that case, you still have your catch up here, but then you're only splitting cash 90-10 um, the whole way. So you can see here is 90-10, um, 12 million. You can see this divided by here is 10% and LP is 90. So if you're not going to reduce the equity basis, then you never can get past uh, tier one in this model. Uh, if you do, then any distributions above the pref will 
count towards repayment of that equity for the LP, and during that time, cash will be split 90-10. And that's what's happening in this first uh, profit share in tier. But these pref uh, or these GP catch-ups do sit ahead of that. If you hit no here, we bypass the uh, first catch-up. And if you hit no on the first one, what that means is uh, you pay the pref and any accrued pref to the LP. After that, you're splitting cash 90-10, no catch-ups. So here's your 90-10, 90-10. And then after equity's been repaid, eventually, whenever that happens, which we do happen in, uh, happens in year 10, now we split everything else 50-50. Uh, now I put a GP catch up here, so actually it's getting it's catching the GP up to 50-50 total distributions. If I hit no here, now you can see it's 50-50 after um, tier one, no catch ups. So the model's very versatile. It can do everything that. So I've done this. This is my primary preferred return model. I also have IRR hurdle, joint venture waterfalls, and a bunch of different ones. But this is the main preferred return one I use. Um, and I've modified it with these two catch-ups. And that's, well, there's also, uh, there's one with one tier, there's one with the two tiers. Uh, I've also got a preferred equity that guarantees 100% repayment to um, GP or to LPs before anything is just split anywhere else without having to adjust anything. Um, but this one is going to be very common and now we've got added functionality for two potential catch-ups, uh, which I think is useful. And a lot of people struggle with how these are supposed to work. So this logic is super useful to test different scenarios and show what the result is going to be mean to the LP and GP based on what was contributed and what was distributed in the fund. Now what would sit on top of these numbers? You might have GP fees, you might, you'll have the operating company's cash flows, and then based on the requirements of those cash, uh, you know, businesses, and what those businesses have available to distribute, you then put that here, which may be a direct reference, it might be a manual reference where you're checking if there was enough cash to distribute, if there is, what is the amount, what have you. I can't tell you how valuable this is. Um, a hundred million dollar fund will find it more valuable than you know a, a two million dollar you know private little deal fund but both will find it extremely valuable i'm only charging for this 75 dollars one-time fee and you can get this download link will be in the description below i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to explain here i'm gonna set these both back to yes um but yeah, I mean, high level, again, you've got a preferred return. After the pref, you, you have the option to catch up the GP to the tier one split. Once they're caught up, you then um, go ca until cash flows have repaid the LP's equity. After that's happened, there's an the option for another catch up. So if you've repaid the, the equity of the LP, now you get all the cash flows until you've been caught up to this new tier two rate. And then once you're caught up to there, now the rest of cash flows are split 50-50. Now you can see how these catch-ups are quite um, are quite large. And I've defaulted to use tier one and two distribution splits as what the catch-up is based on. That is usually the case, especially if there's just a pref catch-up. Um, but technically you don't have to use this. You could adjust the reference for the amount due for the catch-up hurdle instead of being based on um, the 50%. It could be some other distribution rate. Like uh, if it was 90-10 here, maybe it's not 50-50 after the equity has been repaid to the LP. Maybe you're catching the GP up to receive instead of 10 or 50%, maybe they get 20%. And then after they've been caught up to 20% of the total distributions, now, then you split 50-50 after that. But you could have essentially a secondary percentage um, that sits, uh, that defines what this catch-up due is uh, rather than just referencing tier two, but it's most intuitive to use these. It's a little bit easier to explain, basically saying that um, before you start distributing in 
a given tier, you have to catch the GP up to this distribution rate on the total cash flows that have been paid up to that point, but before we've started the tiers. Um, that's all I got for you, I guess. A uh, lot, lot of, lot of time, hundreds, probably thousands of hours I've gone into just this here, making sure everything works and using it with a lot of different clients. Uh, one of my most used templates. Uh, so you can get that uh, if you go over to smarthelping.com. I will list this as a separate template within the joint venture um, bundle. You can buy the whole bundle for $1.99, which comes with all these. Uh, but you can also buy them individually. I will have this new uh, GP catch-up model listed probably as a preferred return three. So there's a preferred return, which is what this current one's based on. There's a preferred return two, a simple interest. This is a little bit of a different style. And then I'll add a preferred return three, which will be this one with multiple uh, GP catch-up sitting above the two hurdles. Uh, distribution hurdles, which I think is interesting, and it, I've used, again, I've used both in real-world scenarios. I've seen both options used here um, in this context. Uh, I've also seen no, none of them used, and just just this used, and also I've seen just uh, you know a pref and then a tier split after that. So there's all kinds of things here um, to structure your fund by, and you could test out the logic with this model. Again, I think it's extremely valuable to anybody doing joint venture uh, work. Alrighty, like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, before I forget, can't forget this. Um, you can hire me to do custom work at $275 an hour. Uh, right now I'm available for same day work, but if I get too busy, you'll, it'll be a couple days. Um, usually I haven't been backlogged more than like three or four days at, ever. Um, I usually get through stuff pretty quick and the projects are usually between two to four hours at a time. And so you can hire me if you want to uh, do some billable work, um, custom financial modeling. Also, you can check out all the financial models if you go to the home page. Down here, the complete library, you can buy all the templates I've ever done for $4.99 which includes, you know, I've got hundreds of, mostly these are uh, startup financial models with different assumptions, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, and, uh, you know, just kind of cash flow analysis, all sorts of things for different um, industries. And uh, I've done a lot of work in the SaaS and subscription space, as well as real estate models. Um, that's how I got into a lot of the waterfall templates as well. Uh, joint venture distributions. I've also got general business valuation tools, accounting templates, HR, uh, all sorts of things. So check it out. Explore. I put, you know, countless, I can't know how many hours and how much knowledge is packed in all these different spreadsheets to, to boost your finance, finance skills. So check it out and I'll see you guys on the next one.